call the meeting back to order. Does the minister wish to have any opening remarks on Bill 21? Yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I'd like to welcome Natalie LeBlanc, uh, at, at Assistant Deputy Minister of Justice Public Safety, uh, here to the House. And I look forward to uh, any questions or concerns that the uh, members of the opposition have on this bill. Thank you. Welcome to the House today, Natalie. Thank you for coming and spending some time with us. Are there any questions or comments on the floor? Yes. Chair recognizes the member from Rasa. Mr. Chairman, I'm a quick learner under your, under your discipline and tutelage. So I'm very grateful that you bring me along gently. This, uh, I don't really know where to start on, on this. The, the outrage and the complete lack of lack of uh, judicial history uh, appalls me. It's the Judicature Act. Judicar judicature means with respect to justice, with respect to the judiciary, with respect to the system of judges and justice. And as far back as the Magna Carta, the independence of the judiciary is fundamental to our freedom and our way of life. I find it interesting on the previous bill with respect to judges' remuneration, the minister went to great lengths to say, well, we need the judge's input, we need the judge's views, we need the judge's contribution. But yet when the Chief Justice, the Law Society, the Canadian Bar, just about everybody who knows everything about this are against it, it smacks political interference. As I continue, I want to say that I bear no personal malice or responsibility towards the minister. He's no more talking for this act than Charlie McCarthy talked for Edgar Bergen. He's doing his master's bidding. His master's the premier. The premier wants this done. And the minister, like a good soldier, is doing what he's been told to do. So I say to you, minister, that many of the things that I might say in outrage of this, I believe that you are the messenger. I don't believe that you are the genesis of this. I don't believe it came from you. I don't believe it came from your department. It came from the premier. And every lawyer in New Brunswick knows it, and they know why, and they know what this is about, and it's rancid. I bet you the Attorney General's office knows it is too. And to your poor colleague who's here to take this nonsense, I offer some compassion to you as well, because Self-preservation is no crime, and when you're told to be here, you're here, and that's your position as an employee, and you don't have much choice in the matter. I notice the, the absence of the battery of people around you when this thing was first introduced. There were people from Justice and Attorney General, and they were all here, and they weren't particularly comfortable with it. They didn't like it. And I'll say today that they're conspicuous by their absence because they're embarrassed by it as lawyers. They're embarrassed by it as lawyers working for the province of New Brunswick. They're hanging their heads over it because they know it's wrong. We have three historic branches of government. The executive branch, 
known as the civil service and the government departments that are made up of that, the legislative branch which makes the laws, and the judicial branch which carries them out. Fundamental in our system is the independence of the judiciary. And this so smacks of executive meddling in the judiciary that it's outrageous for a chief judge to publicly condemn something when judges go at great lengths to keep their silence, keep their, 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 their opinions to themselves, that they would come out against this speaks volumes. The bill is inappropriate. I don't understand why the sudden flip from the Attorney General's office to the Department of Justice for the administration of the Judicature Act. Why did that happen? I suspect it happened because the Attorney General wouldn't do this rancid piece. He wouldn't want his name attached to it as a lawyer. I would venture to say that the lawyers in the Attorney General's office didn't want anything to do with it. They didn't want their name attached to it as a lawyer. And so I believe that there was a tremendous amount of scurrying around the day before it was introduced to move it from the Attorney General's office to the Minister of Justice, and they landed it on poor, the poor minister's desk with no legal training or history or background to this. He has to sit here and take it. I sat here when the lawyers from the Attorney General's office, they couldn't make eye contact with me. It went like that, it went like that. Couldn't look at me. They knew it was so terrible. Premier and the government telling judges where they can live and where they can't. It's judicial interference, it's judicial meddling, and it's not right. Judges interpret the law, the legislature makes the law, and the executive branch carries out the law. And there's independence. Equal, separate branches of our system. And for this, under the guise of housekeeping, an unprecedented meddling, an unprecedented strong arming, so that somebody of somebody's buddy can live where they want to live and they don't have to go by the rules that everybody else goes by. It's disgraceful. People know it is. I bet you Mr. Chairman knows it is. People over there that know it is. House leader wouldn't care, but I think others would. Because you're young and you're new and you're full of good ideas and you're full of enthusiasm and you're committed to doing the right thing and it must make you very, very uncomfortable when you go home and you see that you're being forced to do something that you know in your heart is wrong. Some people can stand up to that type of pressure. Other people can't. You'll have to search inside yourself on that one. The only person who supports this is the Premier. So perhaps I'll get to a question and ask why the sudden change in the responsibility of the Judi Judicature Act from the Attorney General's office to the Minister of Justice? Why such a sudden change on the same day that this was introduced? Why would that have been?
to the member opposite uh, through you, Mr. Chair. In, in most provinces in Canada for, for a number of years, including New Brunswick, the Attorney General and the Minister of Justice were the same people. In this case, they're not. They're two different individuals. The AG, uh, to put it bluntly, is the uh, provincial, the, the government's lawyer. As Minister of Justice, it's my responsibility um, to administer the, the courts through this province. So again, in, in most cases in the past, in New Brunswick, for many, many, many years, they've been the same person. It's, it's an appropriate change that it comes to the Minister of Justice as a person responsible for the administration of, of uh, the courts in our province. So again, it, it's, a, it's a clear, clear answer. They're not, they're not the same person. They're two different uh, portfolios. Uh, one is the provincial government's uh, lawyer, and one deals with the, the court administration, and that's my role. Well, then why would you change a system that was already working if the, uh, if the uh, justice minister and the attorney general were the same person? and they had overlapping responsibilities, some different, some the same. Why this sudden great stir to have to move it from the Attorney General's office to the Minister of Justice office? The day, was there, was there a special cabinet meeting called with, with, with respect to this? As the uh, member opposite knows through you, Mr. Chair, that uh, I cannot uh, talk about what happens in Cabinet, but again, I'll be very clear. In most provinces, including New Brunswick, for many, many, many years, the Attorney General and the Minister of Justice were the one and the same, he or she. It's not the case in our government at this time. There's a different person for the Attorney General, uh, Minister Roussel. Am I, I'm not sure if I'm allowed to say that or not. <laughs> I apologize if I, I'm not supposed to say his name, but... Uh, Two different people. Uh, my job, my role, I, I think is, is appropriate that I deal with the, uh, the administration in, the, in all of the courts in the province in New Brunswick. Um, and, and, and there's no big hurry, there was no change. Uh, I, I think it's a very appropriate change. And uh, as, a, as a time frame, uh, I'm here, I've been here most of the day, uh, yesterday as well, on a number of uh, bills. And uh, this, is, this is just one of them. You didn't even remotely answer my question. You said, in answer to my question, as the member knows, I'm not able to say what went on in Cabinet. I didn't ask you what went on in Cabinet. What I asked you, was there a Cabinet meeting called the Thursday morning that this was introduced with respect to moving the authority of the Judicature Act from the Attorney General to the Minister of Justice. Was there a separate meeting called to do that hastily and quickly in order to make that change? I'm not asking you what went on, but I'll tell you, cabinet meeting is a matter of public, not what went on in the meeting but the actual having of the meeting. Everybody knows cabinet meets on Thursday mornings and cabinet meets at other times. It's in the public domain. There's nothing secretive about that. And I agree. I'm not asking you what went on in cabinet. I'm simply asking you, was a meeting called with respect to this issue? To the member opposite, through you, Mr. Chair, I'm going to say Cabinet met sometime that week. Uh, I won't discuss what took place. Uh, cabinet meets this week. Uh, I think it met yesterday. It meets every week. Um, I shouldn't say every week. Most weeks we meet. Um, but again, the discussion of what took place in Cabinet, as the member opposite knows, I, I won't talk about. Uh, I don't know if uh, specifically what day they met that week but the uh, cabinet does meet on a, usually a weekly basis. 
You didn't answer my question. Was there a hurried, rushed meeting of cabinet to deal with this issue? Yes or no? Not one in the ordinary course of events. Was there a cabinet meeting called specifically to deal with this issue? And was it called on very short notice and it was called to deal with this and deal with this only? <clears throat> And I fully understand the member opposite's question. Was there a cabinet meeting at this specific event? I, I don't know if that was the case. We meet weekly. Uh, no matter how many times or how different he's going to frame the question, I, I cannot comment on what cabinet talks about. Uh, we meet on a weekly, uh, on a number of issues. Here, but you're answering my question for me by not answering it. There's nothing illegal about or confidential about saying cabinet met to deal with a certain issue. You, don't, you can't say what went on and you can't say what was discussed or anything else like that. But the notice of a cabinet meeting is not confidential. The contents of it did. Did the Attorney General's office, I asked you earlier if, uh, if the Commission on a previous piece of ledges at the uh, former Securities Commission. Now he's getting his orders from the old, the old guy, the old, the old fossil himself has come to life. <laughs> anyway, so we're not going to get anywhere on this one, but you pretty well answered my question by your plausible deniability. So I asked you earlier about certain things throughout the day. We've done several bills, you and I, and I've asked uh, you about staff. And I said, does staff recommend this? You said, oh yes, they do. I asked you a question earlier about the commission. Does the commission recommend we do? Oh yes, the minister said, the commission recommends this. Well, so my question I asked you, does legal, did the legal counsel in the office of the Attorney General recommend the transfer of the Judicature Act from the office of the Attorney General to the office of the Minister of Justice? Mr. Mr. Chair, how are you? Uh, to the member opposite through, uh, through you, Mr. Chair, I, I believe the question is being asked about a legal opinion, and uh, legal opinions are very confidential, and uh, 
they're privileged, and I won't comment on that. Um, and I'll leave it just at that. Okay. Again, you will repeat that over and over again, so there's no sense in me beating that. You're hiding behind privilege. And I point out to you that privilege is the property and the benefit of the client. Privilege is between you and your lawyer. You are perfectly at, liber at, at liberty to answer my question because you, Mr. Minister, are perfectly at liberty to give up the privilege which you're hiding behind. Now, the lawyer, if I ask the lawyer a question, they're not my client. They can't tell me because the confidence is as between you and them. You are not bound by solicitor-client privilege. The lawyer is bound, but you're not. So don't hide behind a privilege that doesn't exist. The privilege is something that a lawyer has whereby the lawyer says, this is privileged, I as a lawyer cannot give this to you. The client can give whatever he wants. So I'm asking you the same question again. Was the legal counsel in the Attorney General's office in favor of this transfer? Through you, Mr. Chair, and with all due respect to the member opposite, uh, I'm not here to debate the law with him or any legal uh, debates. And uh, again, we, I feel that this is a legal opinion and uh, it's very confidential and I won't discuss it. All right. But I must say the present Attorney General, a lawyer, of some significant reputation, I would suggest that he would not let this pass on his watch because it would impair and damage his reputation as a lawyer. And I think he kicked the ball over to you because he wouldn't do it. And you're the monkey and the premier's the organ grinder. And I have no I have no animosity towards the monkey. You're playing musical chairs, the premier's uh, cranking the music box, and uh, when the music stopped, you didn't have a seat. So you're the guy that's got to come down here and defend this. So again, it's not particularly your fault. I'm not, I have no personal animosity towards this for you. you uh, you're, you're just being a good soldier and obeying your boss's orders. Uh, some people are able to stand up to uh, that kind of pressure, and some people aren't. Time, time will tell. Have you spoken when we last talked about this, uh, Mr. Minister? You talked about taking the matter up with the Chief Justice, that you hadn't spoken to him, and that you were going to do just that. And you told this House that you were going to speak to the Chief Justice, consult with him, and report back to the House. So what I'd like to know, uh, did you make contact with the Chief Justice? Did you discuss the matter with the Chief Justice? And what were the results of that discussion, if any?
To the member opposite, uh, through you, Mr. Chair, absolutely, uh, as I stated, uh, we have met with the Chief Justice. Uh, I respect him very much so, uh, on, if, on record, if that's what this does. Um, we had great debate, we've had great discussion for some time. Uh, we will continue to do that, as I hope we, we can in the future. Uh, and unfortunately, we didn't come to a resolution. Are you aware that the uh, New Brunswick branch of the Canadian Bar came out against this? Yeah, are you aware? To you, Mr. Chair, to the member opposite, uh, yes, uh, not only have we met with the Canadian Bar Association, I've met and spoke with the Law Society, I've also uh, met with the French um, Speaking, Speaking Jurors Association, um, we explained government's position, uh, we, they, we listened to their, their side, and again, we, we listened. And uh, unbeknownst to uh, what the member opposite is stating, uh, it's not all negative. Uh, there are people who've, who've emailed us and uh, stated they're, they're, they're in agreement with us. So again, it's not all negative, as the member opposite is stating. Uh, there are people uh, who we met with uh, in the law society, the law, lawyers of uh, our province, and uh, some are in favor of it. Well, in politics, you can always dig somebody up who's in favor of what you're doing, but I'm, I'm telling you, as an institution, the judiciary is against this, the Canadian Bar is against this, the Law Society of New Brunswick is against this. And if you start meddling with the judiciary on something like this, where is it going to stop? Where does it end? Well, we don't like this, we don't like that. Well, this judge, uh, this judge might rule against us, uh, so we don't like him in the Judicial District of Fredericton. We'll, we'll ship them off to here, and we'll bring this judge here, and our friends here, and here, and here. Where, where does it end? Meddling. Once, once you start meddling and get away with it, the propensity is to do it again. And I'm asking you, once you start meddling with the judiciary, are you going to do it again? Would you, would you do this again if you got orders to do so on, some, on another issue with respect to judicial independence?
Through you, Mr. Chair, to the member opposite, um, our intent, and my intent especially, is to work with, the ju work with the judiciary. I fully respect the independence of the judiciary, and we continue to that. The amendments to Bill 21 not only take into the account the Chief Justice's words, the Minister's point of view on it, but also takes into the point, and what, this, is, this is important, the judge's views as well. So nothing can be changed without the three of us agreeing, including the judges. Isn't that great? The Chief Justice still assigns work. I play no role in that. The government plays no role in that. So again, I respect the, the independence of the judiciary. Uh, I want to work with the judiciary to make things better. And, and I think that this will do that. It includes the judges. Uh, synopsis on things and, and I think that's a, that's an, that plays also an important role in, in this bill uh, to make it go forward. <laughs> well he now says he can't do anything. I don't know what bill you're reading but it's not the bill that I've got in front of me. Maybe uh, something's uh, disappeared. It says right here consent of the minister. You can't do it without the consent of the minister, without first obtaining consent of the minister. And by saying that you can't do anything, I mean, you're insulting my intelligence. I can read. People can read. And for you to stand up and say that you are nothing but a lowly servant of the judiciary is, is, is really laughable. I don't know, uh, I don't know how, dig, how, how deep you had to dig for that one, but uh, you went down a long ways. And then to say that you respect the judiciary, work with the judiciary. Well, I'll tell you, the opposite is true. <laughs> if you respected the judiciary and worked with the judiciary, you wouldn't be doing this. So perhaps you could tell me then what, give me some examples of problems that had existed with specific judges that, uh, that this particular amendment is going to cure. What, what, what evil are you, going to, uh, are you going to fix? What error are you going to correct? Tell me, tell me, how, uh, tell me what problem it is that you're fixing here. Through you, Mr. Chair, to the member opposite, uh, from what the preamble was before, before the question, I, I want to reiterate in uh, section 12.01 bracket 5 of the Act, if before the commencement of this subsection the Chief Justice of the Court of Queen's Bench designates a place at which a judge was to establish residence, the Chief Justice of the Court of Queen's Bench shall not designate a new place of residence for the judge without first obtaining the consent of the Minister of Justice and that judge. So again, what I stated was, in fact, factual. I'm, as Minister of Justice, I'm responsible for a lot of acts. I will continually, in my role, try to improve acts. 
people in the public, people everywhere, say we have started modernizing our acts, whether it's the Lick Control Act, whether it's the, uh, the Motor Vehicle Act, whether it's any act. We need to start modernizing it because a lot of those acts are old, they're outdated. And I would like to think, but what I, my responsibility as Minister of Justice is to try to improve, improve the judiciary, improve the court systems to help people to come to work. I am constantly, and I will continue to constantly, as I've done here all day with, I think we've had five acts before us today and one yesterday, six acts. And I will continually do for the people of New Brunswick to try to improve the acts to make, meet the needs of the people of this, this province. Well, that was noble rhetoric to be sure, but still none of my questions are being answered. So I'll try another question. In government, legislation gets to the legislature generally uh, by way of two paths. There is policy that the government wants done, so the government says to the public service, this is what we want you to do. So, for example, the HST. That was an initiative of the government. The government said, we want to raise the HST, therefore public service, draft the act, increase the amount, and carry out our wishes. That's one way legislation gets. Another way that it gets here is that the genesis of that legislation comes from the civil service. The civil service doing their job, brings something forth to a minister and says, Minister, we think legislation should be done this, this should be amended, this should be approved, something like that. In my experience in government, I witnessed both, Department of Health, people would come forward. An idea that came from the, uh, from the department wasn't my idea. It was a good idea. Well, okay, I understand, I'll, I'll, I'll take that. And then others came. From, from the policies of the government of the day. So I ask you, with respect to the genesis of this piece of legislation, was its genesis the civil service or was its genesis the executive branch of government? It had to start somewhere. Where did it start from?
through you, Mr. Chair, to the member opposite uh, to answer specifically the question that it was government-led, like many other initiatives. Just like the one we t discussed earlier, like the amendments uh, to the Provincial Court Act. Uh, a lot of initiatives come through government, and uh, government will always play that role, and that's why they're, they're government. Well, again, you didn't, you didn't answer my question. Did this come, did the genesis of this bill come from the Premier's office, period? That's my question. Or did it come from the office of the Attorney General? The office of the Minister of Justice, I should say. Because the Attorney General wouldn't touch it. So, did it come from the Premier's office? Or did it come from the Minister of Justice? We know it didn't come from the Attorney General's office because they wouldn't touch it. They kicked it over to Justice. And I believe that Mr. Roussel has uh, enough integrity as a lawyer that he wouldn't be a part of this. So unfortunately, they stuck it with you. So did, did, just to answer the question, did this come from your department and then you took it to cabinet or did it come from the Premier's office and that's how you found out about it? Which was it? Through you, Mr. Chair, to the member opposite, and I'm sure the member opposite is well aware, a cabinet is made of many departments. Uh, we have ca cabinet solidarity, and uh, the discussion what goes on in cabinet, of course, we've already stated before, would not be uh, t uh, talked about, but uh, it, it, is, it, is, it is forms of government, and it is government-led. Well, once again, intentionally or non-intentionally, you pretty much answered my question. Uh, hiding behind, uh, hiding behind the cabinet, is uh, is really uh, is really a bit of a stretch. I simply asked, did this originate in the Department of Justice or did it originate in the Premier's office? And you've answered some sort of a hybrid, mixed government is government is this is that. Well, government is made up of several departments and several departments generate legislation and some of it comes from the Premier's office. I'm satisfied that you have effectively answered the question in any event. Well, look, I've been, I've been driving for an hour and I've gotten uh, not far. Uh, I could go on and on and on. But again, I, I, I wonder for what purpose. It's clear that the minister is going to do the bidding of the premier on this, regardless of the, of the uh, fallout. It is clear that they've not been able to get a battery of lawyers to come in and uh, convince me of the error of my ways. I was surprised. I thought there'd be a great bunch of people here, but apparently your colleague here drew the short straw, so here she is. And Again, you're doing the best you can in a bad situation, but uh, you have to do what you have to do, and I certainly understand that. The minister is doing what he's been ordered to do. And uh, again, some people can stand up to, uh, to right or wrong, and some people just go with the flow. The latter being the easier. I won't belabor the point. Fundamental in our, is our system is the separation 
of the three branches of government. The meddling between, historically, has been regarded as a wrong perpetrated, perpetrated on the people. The judiciary interprets the law and needs the independence to do so. The legislature makes the law and the executive branch carries out the law. Those barriers have been here in our system for centuries and they're being taken down today. And it's just a start and it's a sad day in New Brunswick when this government brings in legislation to take away the independence of the judiciary, to tear down a thousand years of jurisprudence for somebody's buddy's buddy who wants to live in place A instead of place B. Disgraceful, despicable, improper, immoral. Tragically, it's not illegal. But when there's no moral compass in a government, things like this happen. It's a dark day for the judiciary. It's a dark day for the independence of the judiciary. And where it starts, who knows where it ends. I have nothing more to say on it, uh, Mr. Chairman. My views are well known. The views of the judiciary, lawyers, Canadian bar, bar associations. But this government, the government of consultation, the government of transparency, the government that's going to listen to the people, the government that's going to do the will of the people, is a government of cronyism, a government of their buddies, a government with no regard whatsoever to a thousand years of judicial history, trumped by cronyism.